friends, in our series on the 2011 Japanese tsunami, we have told many stories to illustrate the horror and magnitude of the event. In this video, we go a little further south again and see the effects of the tsunami on the cities of Shiogama and Dagajo, which lie a few kilometers south of Ishinomaki and form a continuous conurbation of over 100,000 inhabitants. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let's get going on to the new video. We know from last episode that the entire area around Ishinomaki is direct across the street from the hippo center of the devastating magnitude 9.0 earthquake that occurred here. Thus, the maximum energy of the earthquake was thrown towards the area in the form of tsunami waves. And therefore, the town of Onagawa, which lies in the deep bay open toward the epicenter, was completely wiped out. The diffraction of the waves around these islands caused the well-sheltered town of Ishinomaki to be severely damaged, and the wave took the most lives of any town affected by the disaster. As I mentioned in the introduction, the towns of Shiogama and Tagajo lie only a few kilometers south of Shinomaki. At the end of this bay, a form of continuous conurbation of hundreds of thousands of people gradually linking up with the city of Sendai. The cities have a connection of industry and important ports. So let's show the course of the events. The existence of these islands that form the natural boundary of Matsushima Bay, the largest of which are Miyato Island and Sabusawa Island, proved crucial to the wave's further progress. If we look closely, we can see that the geomorphology of the coastline of these islands is very rugged, and there are many indented bays. In addition, there are relatively high forested hills on the islands. Thanks to these features, the islands were able to absorb a significant part of the tsunami energy in the area. If we look at this eastern beach of Miyato Island, you can see that behind the original breakwaters, the local development has been completely destroyed. This means that the wave run up here must have been very destructive. This was not only due to the lack of height of the breakwaters, but also because the town behind it was built at the sea level. As a result, the water that overflowed the breakwater completely flooded this whole area and filled it like a huge swimming pool, washing away most of the buildings. This system of protection proved to be ill-conceived. But the Japanese engineers learned their lesson. First, they repaired the breakwaters and raised the height of the breakwater by 1.5 meters. Then they raised the entire area to the height of the breakwater, and only on this modified surface did they begin the construction. This is a very sophisticated measure. The next wave, if it overflows the breakwater again, will not have such destructive force, because the entire buildings will not be submerged in water, but the water will only lap them and quickly return to the ocean. As you can see, other places on the island have seen the construction of new breakwaters, some relying on height, others on sophisticated shapes. It is on the face of it fantastic when you consider whenever the Japanese are building new breakwaters, even on islands to protect the local flora and fauna. On some islands, you can still see the line of how far the water reached during the tsunami. Thanks to this natural wall of islands, only a relatively weak tsunami of churning water burned into Matsushima Bay and did minimal damage to the adjacent town of Takagi. Thanks to this fact, there was no need to take any measures on the shores of the Gulf to protect against tsunamis. The existing barriers have only been repaired and significant foaming has only occurred here at this point of this channel. 
The existing barriers have only been repaired and significant firming has only occurred here at the point of the channel that connects the bay to the open area. Here, the barriers have been significantly improved. If I had to choose where to lift on the east coast of Japan, it would be here. The risk of a deadly tsunami here is absolutely negligible. Unfortunately, this is not the case for the southern and southwestern parts of the bay, at the end of which lies the town of Shiogama. It is clear from the map that this part of the bay is much less protected and more exposed. This also resulted in a much greater power of the tsunami. Let's take a look at the perspective of this small island of Mizushima. This is where the town of Shiogama is located. To the north are a number of islands that we've just talked about. And if we look to the east, we can see the open ocean. Therefore, the tsunami did not have any obstacles in this area. Its relatively high strength can be seen on this Mahashini island, where there were no protective features. As you can see, the local forest has been completely devastated. Nevertheless, even this series of islets served as a kind of buffer to the tsunami's energy. And the shallowness of the bay also played a role in its diminishing strength which greatly inhibited the wave. When the wave reached the port, here at this place where the ship Ignorich is located, random witness was take the moment when the wave lifted the pier, boarding steps and ships, and finally flooded the surrounding infrastructure. Whoa, shock, A few hundred meters away, at the western end of the harbor itself, the arrival of the wave was filmed from the roof of the shopping center. The wave manifested itself as a sudden surge of water that overflowed the low concrete wall and secured the gate, and poured uncontrollably into the streets. The flooding of the street itself was subsequently filmed from this high-rise building near this commuter train line. Fortunately, the wave did not have sufficient energy and so it only flooded the nearby area of the harbor to a height of 1.5 meters to 2 meters. While this caused quite serious damage to infrastructure, it was rather minor compared to other locations. The tsunami killed 12 people in Shiogama. The more southerly Tagajo was not so lucky. Its harbor is exposed to the open ocean, and so a massive wave swept over the city, manifesting itself as a massive and raging water of deluge that damaged a large number of buildings, infrastructure, and took dozens of lives. The area was flooded up to 1.5 kilometers in land. As you can see, the eyewitness footage speaks volumes. But the tsunami has still not shown its greatest destructive power here. The whole area south of Ishinomaki is flat, and there are long sandy beaches, and the bottom only rises gently to the shore. This bathymetry of the coastline has completely changed to the character of the tsunami, compared to the northern areas, which is fully reflected in the Sendai area, which we will discuss in the next video. Friends, Thank you for watching this video. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell so you won't miss any video in the future. That's it and see you next time.